Okay, so we're going to move on to the cold hammer, the cryotherapy. It's a cold wand. It can be sold on its own. In our case for the Academy, it does come in our aquaderm abrasion multifunction machine. So it is cryotherapy technically, and the benefits are gonna be cold hammer cryotherapy is used for the treatment of sensitive skin or help with temporarily shrinking enlarged follicles or pores. So it's not really shrinking them, it's more so blocking them off, closing them. This is gonna have a very similar effect as iontophoresis, but cataphoresis. So remember anaphoresis was opening and prepping the skin, warming it up. The cold hammer and cataphoresis are decreasing blood flow, blocking that follicle, allowing that follicle to actually block out and keep new, uh, invaders into the skin from coming into the skin and block out uh, transepidermal water loss, loss, make it easier for the skin to stay nourished. For those who suffer from acne or other skin conditions, cold hammer can help lock in nourishing ingredients to help you heal faster and to give the deep layers of skin a healthy boost of necessary vitamins and minerals. Almost all face treatments can have cold hammer therapy added on as part of the treatment. I want to go to the next one before we do that. Um, there are really no contraindications for the cold hammer. It's safe to use the cold hammer, even if you have cancer, um, including skin cancer, and be, can be used during pregnancy. There's no electricity and there's no chemical change taking place in the body. You are literally using a uh, modality that cools the wand and when applying it to the skin, it is working to decrease blood flow in the skin, tighten the skin, calm, heal the skin. There are generally no adverse effects or complication related to the cold hammer treatment. Any negative effects of cryotherapy are generally associated with deep cold cryotherapy and not cold hammer. We're not using deep cold therapy like you would in the, what are those machines that people go to and use? Can't think of it, but you stand in it. It's like negative a hundred, well, a couple of degrees and it's cold and annoying, but it's not deep cold therapy it's just cryotherapy you're basically using an ice cube one thing that i will say is you do have to keep working keep moving the uh, the area if you leave it in an area for too long it can damage the the follicle it can damage the skin so you want to be working it the entire time and then let's look up some images of what the machine look, will look like so this is similar to what we have at the Academy. Again, ours isn't standalone. It's in a multifunction machine. Some of them do allow you to control the varying degree of uh, temperature, like the cold. Ours does not. It's a one, one size fits all. It's going to get as cold as it's going to get. And that's all you've got. Some, you know, allow you to vary the temperature. This is another version of a cold hammer. This one also has LED attached with it. Cold and a warm hammer, and then two in one cold hammer with uh, radio, frequ radio frequency microneedling. But it's literally just a little probe. Let's see if we can get close to this picture. No, we can't. It's a little probe that cools down and kind of works like ice. So again, like I said, if I was using this, if I was a waxer, I would use this. If I have sensitive clients, I would use this after extractions, I would use this. Um, after I apply a serum or a toner, uh, the dermal layering step, I would go over with cold hammer just to seal everything in, allow the client to you know, retain the nutrients, retain the moisture that they've got going on in their skin. The step-by-step -step is pretty simple. You're gonna clean the treatment area before using the cold hammer. You're gonna do your regular facial treatment. This is not anything fancy or new, right? Normal facial. To do the treatment on the face, you're gonna start from the bottle or bottom or middle zones of the face and spread outward, moving upward. I like to work with the muscles of the actual face when I'm doing any type of topical modality like this, radio frequency, cryotherapy. I would like to work along the muscle as best as possible. So we are starting from the bottle or middle zones and then we're working on the face and spreading upward and outward from the lower jaw, jaw to the ear, from the lower jaw to the nose, from the nose to the temple, from the inner corners to the temple. And I try not to get too close to the eyes and I'm very light-handed. I'm not pushing this down. 
I am gliding it across the surface of the skin. It's doing the work. The cold is really just working through the epidermis, calming that skin down, sealing in the products that you use. To clean this device with soap and water on a paper towel, wipe the wand with water only on a paper towel and then wipe the wand with EPA, the EPA and the water on the paper towel, not the wand. And then with a gloved hand, wipe the device wand with the EPA on a paper towel as well. An EPA wipe would be great for this. And then I go back over it again with water on a paper towel, wipe the full uh, hammer again, removing the EPA and that's that on that. As far as the direction, I'd work up and out always. And then I will do two to three passes with one spot check max. So if I've got an area that I extracted that's particularly sensitive, I might work that area for 10 to 15 seconds. But overall, this is a two to three minute treatment. And you're really just using this as a finisher. This is one of those things, um, if I'm doing a service, I like to consider this something that's just kind of putting a little razzle dazzle on it right this is not to change the skin per se this is more so designed to enhance all the other things that you've already done this is not going to do anything overtly special to the skin it's more so designed to did i mess delete my whole chart it's more so designed to go in and work as a finisher for all the amazing things that you've already done does anybody have any questions with cold hammer, the cryotherapy? No questions on cryotherapy. Everybody ready and willing to try it? Uh, I have never uh, seen uh, how like we perform this, you say that it can be done after any treatment because it's it's basically not doing, uh, like it's not considered like the treatment treatment. It's more like, uh, like just incorporating another, I guess, step to our facial but it's not gonna make any big changes on the on the on the skin it's more so a finisher so it's not that it's not gonna make changes it's to uh tone and tighten the skin reduce redness reduce irritation so here's one way that she's using it she's doing a spot treatment she's placing the cold hammer down moving it across the skin You can do this on clean skin. You can do this over the top of products. Really, the sky is the limit with it because you're not going to go in and cause any damage unless you're sitting the cold hammer on the skin and actually causing burn, burning, like an ice burn to the skin. Let's see if I have an example of someone actually working out the skin, girl. Someone actually working the cold hammer. Otherwise, I will show you when we actually get into the facility and get to use it. I like to use it as a glide. Nope, she's just gonna talk, okay. I don't have a video example of it, but essentially this is a finisher. This is something that you're using on the client's skin to enhance the treatment that you've already done. You can even use this as part of your massage. So if you've got a client with some, their sinuses are runny, this is a great way to incorporate the cold hammer into the massage. So I would warm up the, the skin do, with the introductory massage strokes. I'd go in and I would do my pressure points on my sinuses to make sure that we've gotten them to start draining. Um, I'm gonna incorporate eucalyptus or peppermint essential oil get that all flowing. And then once I'm done, I can go in with the cold hammer and do a pass of the cold hammer to kind of help that area soothe and calm down. So we worked it, we got it flowing. And then the cold hammer is essentially stopping that process. Does that make a little more sense? Yes. And if you haven't gotten into the facility to do to try these devices yet, I would recommend getting in the facility and actually putting a hand to them. All we're doing now is going over the actual steps. And you know, this is the step, this is how I would use it start to finish. 
get into the facility and actually put it in your hand and see the, re the results real time. So if you've got someone in your treatment room and they have a negative reaction, you can go in with a cold hammer. So let's just say you did a wax on their eyebrow and it's really red, like bright, irritated red. Instead of using a cold towel that's dripping, I can go in with the cold hammer and an aloe gel and work that area to soothe the skin. After I've applied my toner, I can spray toner and then I can work, use the cold hammer to go in and allow that toner to whatever's going to penetrate will penetrate. And then the rest will, you know, act as a glide so that I can stop the close, the, not close, but I say close, but it's not closing the follicle. But when I say close, I'm using it in terms of stopping the action. So I'm stopping the follicle from being as pliable as it would be had I, you know, after warming it up. So I'm soothing the skin, I'm closing the skin, I'm stopping the process. I'm gonna stop this recording for the cold hammer here. Does anybody have any other cold hammer questions?